Welcome at the Wen Genie webinar, Turn Prospects into Engaged Customers. Uh, today, uh, next to me is uh, Bira Tadabalasingam from Yellowtail. And uh, Bira, welcome. And he will explain why mobile became so important in the user experience these days. And later on, I will explain uh, in more detail how One Genie and the technology we provide can help you to get this user experience. Um, for the agenda, maybe Abira, you can start with a short introduction from Yellowtail. Yes, I will. And then from there on, uh, explain in more detail what you have. Sure. Thank you, Dennis. Um, <clears throat> good morning, all. My name is Bira, which is indeed short for <coughs> Bira Shantanabal Singa. Um, I work at a relatively small but lovely company we call Yellowtail, um, where I'm responsible for the discipline we call experience design, which focuses on customer experience and all related matters, such as customer journeys. Um, at Yellowtail, we provide omnichannel, cross-channel consumer solutions in the financial sector. Um, this ranges from strategy to innovation and design to implementation and optimization of these solutions. Um, located in the Netherlands and in South Africa, we have around 100 professionals uh, across IT, business and design. We love to collaborate uh, with partners such as Wangini, uh, all for the betterment of the end consumer. But uh, we truly hope that our work in some way contributes to the improvement of consumer quality of life. Um, as our subject today is, you know, how to attract and retain consumers and why mobile is so important in that. I'll first delve into the first question, which is attracting and retaining consumers. Uh, in our opinion, there are two cornerstones to attract and retain consumers. First of all, you need a solid and inspiring why. You know, why do you, as a provider, as a, as a, as a company, why do you exist? Um, that should resonate and connect with consumers. You know, it's, it, it shouldn't be the obvious what. Uh, which you which you uh, convey. Um, also, you need to have a fantastic customer experience. You need to provide an awesome experience, focusing on human first experience cycles that engage in a mode. Well, loads of fancy words I just dropped there. So let me take a few minutes to um, to go more into detail. Why or why? Um, to feel attracted, consumers need to know the why, so they'll be able to form a bond, you know, a relationship. It's the same in your personal life, because you, you need deep knowledge of, of, of a character of someone to form strong bonds. Um, you've all probably heard of the Simon Sinek's Golden Circle model, which is a powerful model to help formulate the why. What we do in the financial sector now is just we focus too much on the what, what, uh, we try to push products and we try to push uh, services and not many of us know the difference in the why uh, several financial exist. It's really hard to differentiate on that for them. They should though. Um, two examples um, of awesome whys in other sectors are that of Airbnb and Uber. Airbnb aims to connect millions of people in real life all over the world through their communi community so you can be anywhere you want. So they convey this dream of you being anywhere you want. Great why. The second one is Uber. They want to change the way the world moves. Also, that's a great why, which resonates with millions of people and they're feeling attracted to those companies. Um, so you need to have a, a great why. And after that, you need to provide a, a, an awesome experience. So in our opinion, there are three key ingredients to providing the best possible digital user experience. We need to provide products and services that actually fill a human need, not a solution to issues we've cr created ourselves. Second, um, we have to manage the customer journeys as a recurring cycle of experiences, not a one-off flat journey that ends with the selling. Three, we need to differentiate by engaging and emoting consumers with experiences that are designed for multiple senses, not on commodity components or building blocks. Let me take you uh, through a few slides to explain in more detail about those three elements. The first one, um, what we mean by design human first is that, you know, we need to provide products and services that actually fill a human need. and we shouldn't provide solutions to issues we've created ourselves. So how do we do that? 
we need to get to know your consumers, get to know our consumers better. You know, you know, we need to know what makes them tick, what are their needs, and how do we fulfill those needs. Um, I'll, I'll explain an example of something we've uh, we came across in the financial sector, which is the mortgage uh, application process. Uh, currently, we have to um, provide loads of documents, for example, to prove what we say that we are. Uh, what we need to do is so we need to provide all those documents, and we used to do that by post. And uh, we have now been given the opportunity to upload all those documents. But if you look at it, that's just a solution to a problem we created ourselves. Um, <clears throat> if you go w one step back and look at what humans truly need of, or what the consumer truly needs is not to be able to have to provide all those documents to begin with. So what's the real solution? What's the real human first solution? That's actually getting the data from the source itself. Bongini is a, is a, is a company which actually provides a solution that's, that's an essential component in uh, achieving that. The second point is that we have to manage customer journeys as a recurring set of experiences, not a one-off flat journey that ends with the selling. So what we what we notice is that there's so much focus on the lead generation and on the on the selling that you actually after selling a financial product, we've actually lost the consumer. That shouldn't be the case. In our opinion, you know, this cycle should have four phases. One is orientate. Where the consumer actually looks at what products uh, they might be interested in. Then you have the preparation phase in which a consumer gets to know what lies ahead of them, you know, for example, in the buying process. Then you have the buy process itself. And afterwards, you need to provide an environment or a solution or whatever. We call the active servicing part in, in which people can actually monitor their progress, you know, monitor the situation. And whenever something changes in that situation, that might actually trigger another customer journey. As a provider, it's our job to be to be there in the cycle, whenever a consumer wants, but whatever channel they want. Uh, we're talking a lot about channels, and the thing that we notice is that in the financial sector, channels pop up like mushrooms, just for, for the sake of popping up, uh, without consistency and synergy across those channels. What do we mean by consistency and synergy? Well, your service across those channels should be consistent. Um, if you say that you can do everything online and when you, once you go online, uh, it says that you need to call to actually get things done, that's not consistent. And by synergy, we mean that once you, you know, for example, use WhatsApp as your channel of communication, the, what, the customer representative behind WhatsApp should actually have, uh, should be enabled to work at the speed WhatsApp requires. If that's not the case, there's no synergy across those channels. Point three. Well, this is a really important point in our opinion. You know, components like systems and technology will be commodities at a point in time. Um, don't get me wrong, they're essential because you, you still cannot drive a car without four wheels. But they won't be the long-term differentiator. You know, rather focus on experience instead. So what we need to do is engage and emote people with experiences that are designed for multiple senses. With the best experiences you have were the ones where most of your senses were activated. You know, there's a reason that Michelin only awards three stars for not only the food, but they take into account the location, the interior design, the wine, so the whole package rather, which activates the most senses. A great example I just put on the slide here is, is that of the cars. Uh, within the VAG group. Um, they're basically, all those four cars, basically built on the same MQB building uh, block. But I dare to say you still rather drive an Audi than a Skoda. You know, it, it looks better, it feels better because of those rings, it might even smell better, it drives a bit better. So, it, you know, focus on engaging the moting and not on the building blocks. That makes it easier to attract to feel uh, to make consumers feel attracted to you. So we've talked a bit about you know how to get the the how to formulate a great why and how to actually uh, provide a great user experience. But 
How does mobile fit into that? Well, you know, conveying and resonating why is marketing. Uh, creating brilliant experiences involves a great deal of marketing. So attracting con consumers is basically all about marketing. I'm not a scientist but myself, but I've been fortunate enough to have contact with knowledgeable people such as Professor Martinez Weibers from the SA University in Barcelona. Um, <clears throat> so all of the things that I'm telling you about now on this slide is what he has educated me on. Um, you know, we know how the brain looks like. So we have this spinal cord, we have the area which, which, you, uh, which we call the cortex in which you think rationally, and we have the limbic system, which is the feeling part. Science has improved over the years, and we now know that the limbic system is actually responsible for 85 to 95 percent of all our decision making. So to become part of the limbic system, something needs to be used over and over, formed into a habit, which then becomes part of our lives. So the later generation marketing, as Professor Martinez calls it, should target the limbic system to attract and retain consumers. That's not really, you know, that's, that's pretty logical if you think that 85 to 95% of all decision making is done in the limbic system. So, so why is the, you know, why is mobile so important? In 2007, the iPhone was launched and transformed basically everybody's life. Uh, the smartphone has become an extension of our body. You know, Professor even calls it an e-body, a part that we usually, you know, we use habitually and therefore has become a major part of our limbic system and thus our lives. Um, what, that, what that means is that if we make decisions, we use the mobile, mobile phone as it is embedded in the limbic system to make loads of those, uh, loads of those decisions. So it has basically grown into the most important interface or channel of consumers. We used to pick up the phone to call people, now we pick up the phone to WhatsApp people. So we cannot actually seem to live without mobile anymore. And there was a recent survey that asked how people felt that, um, you know, how people felt when they misplaced their phones. And 73% of them actually panicked. Um, I'm not even sure that 73% of people would panic if they had misplaced their children. So that says it all, in my opinion. So if we know that mobile is such an important part of the limbic system, which basically makes all your decisions, so what, what better interface to target than the mobile section to attract and retain consumers? The key, though, is providing apps such as WhatsApp that will focus on content that will regular use. So you need to make your content such that people want to use it regularly and thus become part of consumer life. So the next time a consumer needs to buy something, the lim limbic system favors you. So to summarize, um, in order to attract and retain consumers, you need to provide an inspiring why and an awesome experience. How do you provide an awesome experience? By providing products or services that actually fill a human need not a solution to issues we've created ourselves. Manage customer journeys as a recurring set of experiences, not a one-off flat journey that ends with the selling. And components or buildings block are generic, rather differentiate by engaging and emoting people with experiences that are designed for multiple senses. And we know now that mobile has grown into the most important interface or channel for consumers, so it's wise to use that. Thanks, Peter. That's a great story, especially about managing the uh, experience cycle and uh, and the importance of mobile, how it became so. And if you look at Vangini, we are a software company providing uh, all kinds of technology so that you as a company can seamlessly connect your end users to your online personal services using any device. And in most cases, that will be the mobile, which will be used to access personal data. Um, most of the companies, and especially if you look at the financial services, are in a digital transformation. So they would like to gather offline customers, get them online, and do secure transactions or, uh, in some cases, need strong authentication in order to do some payments, uh, transactions, change your portfolio, whatever. And there's a new bunch of new customers, prospects, which we need to like to turn 
into new customers and directly online. So the aim is that how can we fill this as easy as possible and engage with the customers. So what I will show you how we do it at Vangini and the technology um, and how the technology can help you in order to do that. This is basically a traditional flow, what we see at most companies where they would like to onboard existing customers via the web. So when you have a financial institute insurance, for example, and you need to get an online account, you have to go to the web portal, uh, you have to fill in some personal data to identify yourself, and um, maybe you get an activation code at that stage, but in most cases it will be sent by post. So you have to wait for a couple of days uh, and activate on the website. So there are different channels are involved. It's web, it's email, it's post. And what we see at the customers that there are a lot of dropouts. It's very hard to get people to do this process because once they fill in the web, they forgot the letter, it's already not valid anymore. So they have to do the process again and again. And people don't like that. Um, what we most more prefer is that if you can, are able to get people and hold them in one channel and onboard, onboard them directly, uh, we see that the dropouts are minimal. So in this example, for we say, okay, use the mobile app to onboard people because the mobile uh, is much more hand to handle, it's more flexible. Um, so what actually happens, install the app, um, maybe scan a QR code which you sent in a lot of times by email uh, or by post with the other, in the letters you're already sending. Um, people scan the QR code, choose the pin code and they enrolled and they can access the data. And what you see now is that from the user experience there was no channel switch anymore. People can directly, instantly access their data and do online business. But in some cases, some insurance companies, banks, you would like to have some more identity insurance. You would like to know, is it really the person who, who, who he says it is and does his personal data belong to him? So in this case, for example, you can add some extra checks uh, by an ID check. Uh, which helps you to identify the person. So what actually happens is once you install the app, which I've shown you in the previous slides, people have the option to verify uh, and use a driver's license or a passport to identify. So we, the ID checker, the tools will strip out the name, address data. You may have to make a, a selfie at the moment to make sure that it's you on the other side of the phone and they compare it and they have a verified identity. So it gives you more assurance that the people are the one they are saying and would like to access their data. After that, you have also the different options that uh, people can log in more easily by using the pin code but or even using the fingerprint. And we can also add other biometrics like voice or iris scans. The interesting part is that once they did it, they used the mobile to enroll and access their data. They're also able to use the mobile to log in on the website. So they go to the website, they use the mobile phone to log in, they get a login, uh, push authentication, and they can access the data. Uh, and it's not a simple login, it's a very strong login mechanism. So from that perspective, at that moment, people can also do transactions. There was no user creation. People didn't need to create a user account, a username, password in order to get access to the web. It's all handled by mobile. Of course, you can implement that they also would like to or can create a username, password, but that's up to you as an organization. So going into that in a little bit more detail, we discussed um, from your current customers to get them online, but what about prospects? Prospects is basically the same process. And you can also use the mobile to engage in a much more easy stage than you do at the moment. Because looking at now how prospects are being handled is all via the website. And the mobile is being used as a separate application, mostly for your customers. 
we say start using the mobile app as soon as possible, engage with the customers and get them from prospect to customer. So as a prospect, you will install the app. Choose, for example, pink code if you would like to do that. And he can do whatever you want. For example, request quotes, make calculations. You have to provide them some tools which, they, which are interesting, of course, for them. But once you have done that, you have engaged with very soon. So you can communicate really with him, with him using, for example, push applications or provide him all kinds of services. And you can also use the same mechanism to log into the website and you can access, for example, the portal where he has limited access, but still can make his calculations, um, uh, request quotes, etc., etc. So also in this case, people don't have to create any username and password anymore. And it gives them a lot of convenience because the user experience is so easy. And it doesn't have to be at the website at the moment because you can also be in the train or in different places, anywhere you would like to do business with you instead of using only the website. So once you have the prospects, whether it's mobile or website, you can to transform him to a customer. Uh, that's the later stage. The only difference to what we have seen between prospect to customers is that you have to do an extra validation. So you have to make sure it's the right person. In some cases, that's already been taken place by the standard processes within the organization from the common prospect to customer. But you can also use the tools which we have seen before, like the ID check. Once they will become customers, you will ask them to verify, send them ID, do an ID check, uh, passport or driver's license scan, and then you have identified him and he can become a customer. And you have a strong relationship with him. And again, you can use, of course, the mobile and the web together. The most important thing we would like to say and, uh, and get your attention for is that don't use mobile as just an app for your existing customers. Mobile is much more important and should be uh, at the same level as your web uh, and use it as a real omni-channel. So thanks for your attention. And I would also like to thank Bira for explaining him and what's very impressive about managing the experience uh, cycle. So I would like to thank you all for listening and um, hope to see you at the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you.